For an ideal gas, the product of the pressure and volume is constant for a fixed temperature. What happens when we change the temperature? Well, let's hold the pressure constant and vary the temperature and see what happens to the volume. We can plot that, and it turns out the relationship is linear. There's a direct proportion between temperature and volume. As the temperature decreases, the volume decreases. Here I've plotted it for a sample of gas 1. Here's a different gas sample. Decreasing temperature, decreasing volume. Now in this scale, as I go to zero in volume, that'll represent an absolute zero because I can't go negative in volume. There's no such thing as negative volume. So as I get to zero in volume, I reach a logical zero in temperature. And we call that absolute zero because we can't measure a temperature on this scale below that temperature. The Celsius temperature scale has a zero set at the freezing point of water. And I can measure this zero on this temperature scale on the Celsius scale. It turns out to be minus 273 Celsius. So minus 273 Celsius is an absolute zero in temperature. I can't measure temperatures below that because that corresponds to negative volume for an ideal gas. I'll relate the Celsius scale and our absolute scale in Kelvin by the temperature in Kelvin is the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. Our standard temperature and pressure will be one atmosphere of pressure and zero Celsius or 273 Kelvin. The Kelvin unit, the Kelvin degree, and the Celsius degree are the same size. The zero is offset by 273 degrees. Now let's look at our temperature volume relationship in a demonstration. I can take a volume of gas and expose it to very low temperature. Here's liquid nitrogen. This is at about 70 on the absolute temperature scale, 70 Kelvin. As I expose a volume of gas to that very low temperature, the volume decreases. And we understand that this volume is decreasing linearly. As the temperature decreases, the volume decreases in a corresponding linear fashion. I'm going to go down to very near within 70 degrees of that absolute zero temperature. That's where this liquid nitrogen is. The volume of the balloon has gone very, 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 very low. Now let's remove the balloon from liquid nitrogen and let it expand. As the temperature increases, the volume of the gas increases. The volume of the gas increases linear as the temperature increases, and you can see this volume comes back to near its original volume. Linear relationship between temperature and volume. Now, we have a relationship between temperature and volume and pressure and volume, and we can relate all the variables in what we call the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is the relationship Pressure times volume is a constant for constant T, where these three values are held fixed. N, the number of moles of gas, R, the ideal gas constant, a constant, and T. If I change temperature, the value of this constant changes, and pressure times volume is a new constant. Now, this occurs for all gases that behave ideally. And interestingly, I can treat ideal gases in little samples. Let's say I take a one mole sample of gas, and I look at just half of the moles, half of the gas, half a mole. That half a mole of gas, those particles, they behave as if they have the whole volume to themselves. And that's how gas particles always behave. Gas particles don't interact with each other in the ideal gas sense, so they behave like they have the whole volume. Half a mole of a sample will exert half the pressure. It'll occupy the whole volume, but exert half the pressure. A third of the particles will exert a third of the pressure. So we can look at fractional pressures and partial pressures in terms of partial number of particles. The ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, one of the most common expressions in chemistry. We can apply it to the entire sample or to fractions thereof and come up with expressions for
pressure, volume, and the temperature of an ideal gas.